Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at how I have set up a, um, a network video recorder for my uh, cheap IP cameras uh, that you can get on eBay pretty pretty, uh, pretty low cost, like 30 to $50. Uh, I have these Foscam cameras and uh, I have one set up wirelessly and another set up uh, using Ethernet. And um, I'm going to show you how to use uh, Orchid Core VMS, which is a uh, a video management software. I believe that's what VMS stands for, but it's uh, by IP Configure. You can go to ipconfigure.com, check it out. Uh, we're going to install uh, Orchid Core because it's free. Uh, and then let's see if I can find where it has the download. Um, so we got some stats here. Down here it shows what you can do with it. Uh, we're going to install it on uh, Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. Um, and then these, these are just the limits for the trial version. Basically the trial never runs out, uh, but you can only run four cameras and only uh, hold 128 gigs of video data. But for these uh, cheaper cameras, that's plenty. Uh, eventually uh, you could probably upgrade to a different software. I'm not sure if this is the best software. I just find this uh, very intuitive, easy to use. There's not a huge amount of uh, features, but uh, it works and I like it. Uh, you can also, if you want, you can install this on a Raspberry Pi uh, and you get around that uh, retention and cameras. Uh, I don't have one and um, I'm running Proxmox for my virtual machines and I don't think there's a way to run uh, ARM uh, images on, on a Proxmox. I think it's just uh, x86. But uh, anyways, we're going to install the Ubuntu version. Uh, what you need to do beforehand is uh, have a server. Uh, I'm using a virtual machine in my Proxmox environment. Uh, I've got, let's see if I can see, basically this machine is, uh, where's the summary, data center summary. So I've got one machine um, with 64 gigs of RAM and uh, 24 cores that's being utilized to its uh, fullest not really but um i have set up a, a vm we've got uh ubuntu uh, 16 o or 16.04 installed uh 100 gig hard drive you can do 128 gigs i guess or a little more uh but orchid's only going to let you keep 128 gigabytes i just did 100 because it's an easy number uh, and then i have two network devices um i have one to access the uh web panel for Orchid and then I also have one for my camera VLAN. You don't have to do this. You can run your cameras on the same network as all your other stuff. Uh, I do this just because these Chinese cameras you never know. You can see the uh, the packets that are, are headed out to Chinese IPs so I lock them down in their own VLAN. Uh, just to show you how I do that in PFSense, that's what I use for my router. Uh, I just have an implicit deny in my VLAN 7, which means the cameras can't reach the internet, they can't go between VLANs, they basically can stay inside their own. And uh, there's only 24 megs of data that's being transferred, so no video or anything like that. But I like to keep the uh, the Chinese IoT devices uh, locked in their own separate network. Uh, so basically that's what this interface is for, so we can access the cameras uh, in VLAN 7. Um, other than that, uh, all I have is Ubuntu installed, and uh, we can get to configuring this. I also have your ca cameras connected to the network. That's, uh, I guess, a given. Okay, so now we're SSH into the server. Uh, we can uh, start off by installing uh, a package called GDB. Uh, that's what we're going to use to install it. It's basically a simple installer for Ubuntu for this, uh, this application. Uh, what we need is um, uh, sudo apt get um, we'll do a dash y install uh, GDB. And I've already done it. It takes a little while for it to uh, run. It takes like two minutes or so. Uh, but install that. And then the next thing we need to do is actually, uh, we don't have anything here, so we need to install the package, which is going to be, um, if we go down to on the, the website, if we copy the link address to this on Ubuntu. 16.0 uh, or 16.04 uh, and then go back to our console and um, 
get it. It'll download the file. It's 80 megabytes, so it'll take a little minute. A little minute. It'll take a couple seconds to download. Okay, now that the download's finished, you can see it's there. All we have to do is run sudo and then gdebi. Oops, gdebi and then the package name, which is that. Hit enter and it'll install it. So now we have a few things to go through. Um, so the first thing it asks is, do you want to install the package software? Uh, yes. And now we've got a, a configuration thing here. So basically you want to read this. This is your user agreement or don't read it. Um, agree to that. And this is the, uh, are you the end user or duly authorized to enter binding? Sure. Yeah. We're the end user, uh, web server port, uh, we'll pick 80 cause why not? Uh, default admin password, give yourself a password. Um, I'm just going to do password to be simple, if it'll let me. Uh, directory to store your archives, that's where uh, video files are going to be stored. I leave a default, take note of where it is, and you'll be able to find them if you're searching through uh, SFTP or something like that. Uh, and that's about it. We're done. So uh, before we can actually get to the um, interface, we need to open ports in our firewall. Actually, let's just try it because I don't know if Ubuntu has firewall enabled by default. So the server address for this is 10, 0, 10, 1, 10, and it's port 80. Okay, so we don't need firewalls on, I'm thinking CentOS. So our username is uh, admin, whoops, um, and we will uh, use our password, a password, Okay, it's not admin. What is the default? Okay, I had caps lock on when I did the password. Um, so your default username is admin, password is whatever power, password you set. And uh, here we're in the ORCID core uh, main screen. So basically at this point, all you have to do is add your cameras. So this is your timeline here. Uh, you can move it around. So the first thing we're gonna do is configure a camera by hitting add new camera. And then since uh, these cameras have uh, what's called the, uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's like OIV, ONVIF. So it's uh, a default service for these cameras. These are the two cameras that I have. Um, I can add them that way, or we can add them manually uh, using a generic RTSP uh, address. So basically what you do here is you find out for your model of camera what your stream URI is, which it should either say in the manual or you can find it online. Um, and you can, uh, usually you set up the cred credentials when you, uh, you first start. Hopefully the password doesn't show up. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do auto setup. Uh, credentials is going to be, uh, I think it's that and that for uh, this camera, actually let's do, I think it's this, and we'll register this camera. Let's see what happens. So we got error, creating camera, not authorized. So I put in the wrong username. Um, let's refresh, try and do that one again. Register selected cameras. Okay. I don't remember what my username is. Uh, maybe it's this one. That's this username and password. Uh, no such node. Okay, well, let's uh, let's uh, do it the generic RTSP way. So to do this, um, I just have to grab my camera's uh, RTSP configuration. This right here. So basically, you have to find this basically well, video main for FOSCAM. It might be the same for other Chinese cameras, but uh, we'll give this a name. That's my bedroom, I think. Uh, credentials is that and that, I believe. And we'll hit register and it should work. So now we have a little up icon and we'll get a feed, hopefully. My room's not terribly messy. Uh, so now we have our first camera. Uh, let's add one more camera. 
We'll add the other one because I have two. We'll do generic RTSP again. Uh, this one is 102. Um, this one's a closet cam. The credentials are these ones because for some reason I didn't use the same username. And we'll register that one as well. And that one's up. So now that we have those, we can go to our Orchid Core homepage, hit this little plus button up here, and we can drag these into our view. And basically what this does is it shows you your cameras. Those are live views. So if you look down here, you can zoom in. It's me doing stuff. I put my arm out. There's my arm. So the live view in the web panel is pretty slow, but since I, here, I'll move my arm around and then we'll go back. Down here is where you jog through your video. This uh, bar means that there's motion detected. So if we go back to there and zoom in down here again, we'll see my arm stick out at some point. Maybe. I guess it's just detecting motion on my screen, but there's my arm and it plays back at original resolution. For some reason, these are on night mode. It's not that dark in my room. Well, actually my closet lights turned off, but um, I guess the, uh, whatchamacallit, infrared is turned on. Uh, and yeah, so basic, oh, my camera timers are way off. Actually that one, no, that's AM and that's 325. Yeah, okay. The Chinese camera time stamps, they do, they, they do not uh, stay correct. I might turn those off. Uh, what else do we have to go over? We just have uh, retention, basically. System status shows um, cameras running. Um, system report, not sure what that does. Oh, that shows the events, how many events happened. Um, and then if we go to retention, we can see that uh, these are both on automatic retention. That's normally how I leave it. I don't know why one's so much higher than the other one. Maybe just the uh, colors saving. I don't know. Maybe one's not in 1080p mode or something. But uh, right now with 100 gigs of uh, storage, or actually we have 89. Oh, no, that's our max threshold. So we have 100 gigabytes of storage around. Um, we'll be able to retain 4.9 4 days for each camera. Actually, let's hit automatic. 4.8 and 4. Or five, I guess, and we can save, and that's that's our uh, retention. So that's how many days you'll be able to scroll back and see what's happening. And uh, yeah, so 100, 100 gigabytes isn't isn't bad for uh, you know this free software. If we go back to our screen here. You can move these around. The site works really well on mobile, so you can stack them like this. Um, zooming in works pretty good. There's my Google Home. Um, yeah, that's about it. So, uh, hopefully you guys can get this stuff set up and running. It's relatively easy to set up and, uh, pretty straightforward. And, uh, now you've got a quick NVR solution, even if this is a, a an in-between kind of solution. Like, I plan on finding some better software that gives, uh, notifications and integrates with, um, smart devices, which would be nice. I haven't found that yet. If you guys have suggestions, uh, you know, leave it in the comments. I'd love to know, and uh, yeah, this is what I use, and it works really well. And uh, you can actually, if you want, you can go into Linux, and you can set up replication. On my main server, I have this replicated to a, a cloud service, so it saves the video files uh, and retains them for a certain amount of time off-site, so that if, say, someone, you know, stole my servers or something like that, uh, I'd still have the video. So... I hope you guys found this enjoyable or informative or, uh, you know, maybe you guys want to get this uh, done yourself or you just finish it now following this video. Uh, hope you've enjoyed. Give me a like if uh, it worked out for you. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.